happy Thursday, happy Halloween. Hope that all your little ghosts and goblins have either visited or didn't come at all, or it's super quiet. But if not, no worries, we'll record this. I, we, I had a few goblins earlier. We live on a really quiet street and there's not a lot of kids in the neighborhood. So we don't usually get, I just had my four, my four little goblins. And um, Grace and Lucy came. I'll show you pictures later, <laughs> of course. And then Bo and Robbie didn't come because Bo wasn't feeling good, but I went there and delivered. I made mini, I know I'm one of those Grammys. I made mini um, banana bread loaves because we didn't need any more lots of chocolate. And then I used our little coffin boxes. Hey, hey. And I stamped on those. I do have pictures, but they're gone. I, I, they're on Sarah's phone, <laughs> but I'll get them for you. And I stamped on the boxes and then put a little bit of M&Ms in them. So I was okay. All right. I hope you all had a great day today and got a chance to do. I saw that Susan did some, had a day of craft at her work. That's awesome. So excited to see that. I love it. Um, just before we get started, I want to remind you, I sent out an email to everyone who is enrolled in the classroom for something, doesn't matter what. I might be going to your junk, so just double check and see if you saw something from the classroom, but you can always come in here. Basically, if you go to the, the regular, you know, the caramilla.com, click on classroom, this is what you'll see, okay? And then you go into classes and you'll see what's coming up and you can take a peek around. The big one is the on online retreat. That's not till December. So we have a whole month to think about that and figure that out. This is the one that you need to pay attention to if you really wanted to come. Tomorrow is the very last day in order to get everything pre-cut and get to you before the class or close to it. Um, the class is going to be on the 5th. So you don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to leave it open because look at how you can enroll. You can enroll in this, keep scrolling. You can either pay for it if you want, that, that's one way, or you can order it with the stamp sets, or you can place a $50 order, use that host code, and not only do you get your order from Stampin' Up!, but you get this whole thing from me for free. I've set up all my classes that way, so if you place an order, with the host code that it tells you, then you can get the class for free. And the class means you get something in the mail. Now, if none of those things appeal to you, you don't want to do any of that, you can order, you can just say, well, I want to come to class. I want the tutorial. And if you have an SVG, I want that too. But that's all. I don't need anything that's going to come in the mail. If you pick this one, it will tell you that you download the instructions, you'll get a cutting guide, but you don't get anything in the mail. Okay, so that's what that means. I just wanted to kind of explain that a little bit quick because it seems like there's been a lot of, what? Remember, this is the freebie one. Everything's in here that we do here in Facebook. And then these are the next two. So we have three right now plus the retreat that are really open. This one is kind of cool. This is gonna be using this awesome stamp set. I love that one. We used Waterfront, but this one's similar and you kind of build your design with it. That's what you're going to need. I'm also going to grab this, which we're going to use in the retreat. I'm going to use this stamp set a lot over the next six weeks. So it, you wouldn't just get one use out of it. You would use those sentiments and those um, the various sayings on lots of different cards. Keep going past my smiling face, and you will see that there's, again, options to get that. Now, if you're looking at that and thinking, well, what if I just placed one order do I have to use different host codes for everything? You really don't. If you want, that's one way for me to know what class you want. But if you want all the ones that we're offering, just place your order that equals the total, add them all up, and then send me a note and say, I want everything. So the other option is the November Card Club. We're going to be using these, which P.S. you will see this tonight. You won't see this, but you'll see these. So, lots of things going up. Take a peek, wander over there, look around, see what you think, and then come on back. 
to the classroom. Okay, so here's what we're doing tonight. Tonight, tonight. <laughs> Lucy's been singing tonight, tonight lately, so it's in my brain. We are going to do a non-Christmas color card. So, oops, let me get back over there. This is the card that we're going to do tonight. This is using that same stamp set that we used on Monday. And we did this one, and you can see it doesn't even look like the same animal. Okay, it's a tree. But, all right, so how are we going to do this? We are still heat embossing, because I love it. So we're still heat embossing. We are using Memories and More, your Versamark, your white embossing powder, and this part of the punch bundle. There's two in the bundle, and it comes in the brightly gleaming um, stamp set that it lines up with perfectly, which I don't have it right here. Trust me, it does. <laughs> I'll find it in a few minutes when I'm not looking for it. It'll just pop out at me. But anywho, this is the punch that we're going to use. Hey, Vicki. So we don't need this bigger one for right now. We're going to use this one. All right. And I wanted to go with some totally different colors. You'll notice on the directions, I said it was Bermuda Bay. It's not. It is Coastal Cabana. That's what this blue is. You could use Bermuda Bay, but it's Coastal Cabana. I'm using all seas. Coastal Cabana and Calypso Coral are our colors tonight. Totally not Christmas, but I love them. Okay, the other thing that you're going to need is your rhinestones. Just your, your regular, plain old rhinestones. All right, let's get, and this is probably the easiest card I've ever given you cutting instructions for. It really is super, super easy. So you're going to cut your card base, which is to take your 8.5 by 11, cut it in half. So now I have an 8.5 by 5.5. I'm going to score at 4 and a quarter, and I'm doing that out of the Coastal Cabana, or Cabana. And there's my card front, all right? Now I'm going to take another piece, and I'm going to cut this to three and three quarters by five. Remember, tomorrow this is available, the brand new trimmer. I got an update from this, the company today that they're concerned this may go on back order before the beginning of next week. There's a lot of people that want it. There are more coming, so if you miss it or you can't do it till next week, don't worry. There's more on their way and they will be here next week. They thought they had enough, but they're, they're just a little worried about how many of you have said, we want it, we want it, and that it might be an issue, okay? So just, if you're thinking you want it and you need to be one of the first, then you should probably grab it first thing tomorrow. So I'm going to trim it three and three quarters. Remember, I told you this the other day when we were using it, but this is not like the other one in that you do not need to be heavy-handed. You don't need to like push down on this. You really need to just push it along. It's really that easy. I don't need any pressure on it. You just push it and it cuts. It's also super crazy sharp. I've cut my thumb. I've cut my finger with it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> it says it's sharp. It is a blade. Pay attention. No. And then this is the scoring part. So to score, and that's, what I, that's where I get in trouble. That's me. I, I moved the wrong blade. So you want to make sure that you are not going to cut this in half, which, as we talked about last week, people did it. I'm really an idiot, Kathy. I was looking at the blade and went, oh, I wonder if it's sharp. Duh. Yup, it is. Super sharp. What a ding dong. So I'm going to place this at four and a quarter. So don't do that. You know, it is sharp. And then when you're going to push the blade up to get the blade out of the way, don't put your finger under there. Hey. So it can totally use your error. It is not the machine. It is me. I'm thinking of three things and not paying attention. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take the scoring tool. And that you're going to want to push a little. And I usually go up and down, up and down. And then when you pull it out, you'll see your score line right there. And as soon as you bend, it grabs. 
okay? It really is Christine. Okay, so there's that. Christine did get to try it out when she was here visiting. Okay, so we have this and we have this. All right, so that's gonna go on there. Now, we it's time to stamp. All righty, I need to grab something over here. I need my embossing buddy. So embossing buddy, right? <laughs> Right? I know. Do you think it's hot? Duh. Yeah. Super hot. Okay, so this is your embossing buddy. And I don't need this as much in the summer, but as it gets cooler and the electricity or the heat's on and the static gets going and your hair starts standing up, this helps with the static to give you a cleaner emboss. So I'm just going to do this because I have a ton of embossing powder all over here. All right. And I am going to wipe this down. Okay, now, you'll notice on my card, I embossed everything. I embossed this tree, I embossed my sentiment, and I went inside and put some embossing in there. It just makes this card look so wow, and really, it the card itself is really two layers. It's not a big deal. So, let's do the front first, and <clears throat> you really don't have to do everything all at once. I was not going to do all this with you, but that's eh, the fun part. So, this is a big tree. I like to get my ink, my Versamark on this way, rather than putting it on the pad. Make sure it's nice and shiny all over. And then you're going to come down and line this up. And good even pressure. This is a big one, so this could be done with the Stamparatus. Make sure that you like what you see. See it? Now I'm also, while I'm here, I'm gonna do the sentiment, and I use the Glad Tidings. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it on this side this time. So there is Glad Tidings. Then I took a piece of my grid paper, pop that underneath, put the cover back on my ink, and we're going to sprinkle away. This is the white embossing powder. Silver would look really cool too. Don't be stingy, just get it all on there. Cover it all up. And then you're going to take the excess. And if you didn't get a good coating, just come on back and add some more. Then you're going to shake off the excess and you're going to make sure there's none like around the edges or on your sentiment. You want just where you stamped. Then before you pull out your heat tool, you're going to pick this up so that you don't blow this all over your desk. I don't know who would ever do that. <clears throat> yep, that was me. And put the cover back on. The silver would be beautiful. Yes. Wait, isn't that pretty? I love it. And then heat this up a little bit. When it's blowing good and hot, then bring this in. The white seems to take a little bit longer, I think, for some reason. I just feel like it does. Maybe not. And this is a lot, so you want to make sure you don't miss anything. Once it starts to turn, I love it. 
Now, if you notice, you can see that I kind of missed some spots in here. Come on back and get them. All right, and we're good. Now we're gonna let you sit up here for a minute. And then we're gonna bring in our Calypso Coral. And we're gonna use, there's two ornaments in this set. Both of them fit with this punch, right? It's not part of the bundle. It's a little extra, but it fits the memories of home. So then I'm gonna take, now you could use other colors. I used the same, I just did three of the same color, but I used different um, different, I just keep flip the stamp over. So I got two of one and three of the other. You wanna make sure that you get good, good ink. Remember the Versamark does have a refill and sometimes if you're doing a lot of heat embossing, you're better off to refill your ink pad. And then the same process we're gonna do with this. Doo -doo -doo. Again, good and heavy. And then shake this off. Looks pretty good. If you feel like you want more, you can come back over it. And then I'm gonna take my, while I have this all out, I'm gonna do the inside of my card as well. And I use the, this sentiment that says, may your Christmas, I don't know, I can't read it upside down. <laughs> it says, may your Christmas be filled with all the memories of home. I love that sentiment, perfect. So a little Versamark. and a little stamp and some more powder looks pretty good now we can clean up all our mess before we bring in the heat tool see it goes pretty quick really and you could do you could easily mass produce this so you could do probably five at a time maybe. Line them all up. Now if you have any excess, I use a little brush and just kind of trim. Don't touch the part you want to stay, but you can tr make sure there's no little feathers around the outside. I know we've done a lot of heat embossing this week, and if you've not done it before, really, this will just blow your Christmas stuff out the door. It's so cool. And just the way it feels, like I love the, to touch a heat embossed card. It's definitely raised. It feels super elegant. Okay, so there's that. Now remember, we're gonna bring this on the front. And let's do these guys too while we're heating. And then we can let them cool a little bit while we put the card together. This kind of, this seems like it's going faster. The tree, I guess, because it's so big, takes a little bit longer. What I did on the, on the other card is I went back and before I said, yeah, I'm good, I put the powder on, I shook it off, and then I took it off, and then I put more powder on and shook it off. I did it a couple of times, and I think it, it made it a little bit heavier on the ornaments. Uh, I could be imagining it. Okay, so let's put this, this piece on the front. A couple of choices. This is done straight down and tight, right? This one I'm gonna do with some dimensionals so that you can see how it looks. I do love the white, I think it's so pretty. And it would be pretty on any color. I mean, 
think on a cherry cobbler and some mossy meadow those colors would look great together you could pop a layer of designer series paper in here to add a little a little frame behind it because i did this at three and three quarters by five which would let you pop in a four by five and a quarter underneath if you wanted a little something else Some glimmer would look cool. Some of the foils would look great. I know, Kathy loves silver. Okay. And now we're going to pop this right on. All right. So there's that. See the difference? It's popped up a little from this one. All right. Not, not crazy different, but a little bit. Now, in order to get the punch in, I should have turned him this way, but it doesn't matter. I can still fix it. But I'll show you what I mean. Had I punched them this way, I could just slide my punch in. But I didn't. So now I can do this one. And notice that this fits perfect, right? Whoops, hello. And then just snip this off. And then this one. Is anybody else having really crazy weather? Some places around us canceled Halloween trick-or-treating tonight because they thought it was gonna be, you know, horribly rainy. Well, we didn't get any rain. But it's still in the 70s, which it has not been at all. I think the rain's coming. But the kids were able to get out and do their trick-or-treating before it did anything. Super weird all day. And last one, get in there. But they're warning like high winds and rain and... Oh, you did gold? Ooh, stepping out. Okay. Kathy always does silver. <laughs> and then these guys need some dimensionals. And then they are going to get put on the tree just like you would real ornaments. Um, I tried them on different colors on the back. I tried it without the... and just a Calypso coral. And I didn't like them. But you could. You don't have to heat emboss, but I like that. Oh, you're having flurries? No, no flurries. Yeah, it, and it, of course it's hot in my house because I baked bread today. Because I thought it was going to be cold, but nope, it wasn't. We had the oven on this afternoon. Not complaining at all. It'll be cold soon enough. All right, and then last but not least, and then it's time for rhinestones. I took the biggest one and put that on my tree, and then I took the itty bitty little ones at the bottom and just kind of assorted them around on my ornaments. Get in there. Isn't that cool? I love, you know, these colors are right up my alley. Beachy. I don't know, I live in the mountains, but I love the beach. Yeah. So there we go. What do you think? Isn't that fun? I like that one a lot. Now, I wanted to show you this is the same idea using the gold ink, which by the way, they that gold ink is not going to carry over. It's only in the holiday catalog, the gold and the silver and the copper, and it's out of stock in most places. So if you got it, awesome. But you could do this too, and you could do the same thing. I tried trimming it because I wanted to see how I liked it, and the ornaments in the gold. Now I could use gold embossing as well. 
So this is pretty elegant. I like this too. All right. Well, I hope you, you like the idea of getting a lot of different uses out of this tree. We used him for background stamps on this one. We used him in totally non-Christmas colors. And we used him white on white. So lots of different options. And I didn't even begin to go to the tag options. So, because this has to and from, it has, these are perfect for tags because they're little and you're just punching them. Peace, love, and joy, Christmas cheer. This is a really useful set. It's one I didn't think I needed it. I didn't think I was going to worry about it. And I love it now that I got it. So have a wonderful weekend, everybody. We'll see you back here Monday. And remember, if you're thinking that you absolutely positively want to be the first one on your block with the trimmer, you're going to want to grab it tomorrow. So the trimmer and a stamp set, and you can be in on whichever of the upcoming classes that you want to try. So just let me know. Um, I am here. I hope to be home most of the day tomorrow, and I'll be sure to help. See you soon. Bye.